Hello, let's have a look at the different parameters of the banana indicator. So let's go to the indicator list. After installing, you have to go through the, this indicator, iTrade Aims. The banana will appear in your indicator folder. It is going to be this one. Let's go to the parameters and I'm going to explain to you what each one does. So you will see a, a version 10.10. .10. You'll see those. You need to have allow DLL imports. You need to have allow external. And before I go into that, for this indicator to work, what you need to do is you go to the options and make sure that allow DLL imports is clicked. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So the installer will install two files. One is a DLL file, which is for security. It's going to be in your libraries folder automatically installed. And the other one is the indicator. Let's go back to it. Open this. And we will go through the in input. So the setups, the settings that I have right now, uh, they are as default. So if I reset this, everything is going to be default. These are my settings. Uh, but there are several different settings that you can use. I recommend that you don't mess with them uh, to get the same results. But if you know what you're doing, there are a few things that you can do. For example, if you want the um, first option is if you want the, the signal to be printed in the middle of the candle. So let's... We can set that to true. And now what happens is that the indicator is printed in the middle of the candle. So some people might like that. And this will be useful, particularly if you don't want to see the one, two, three signals. I highly recommend you don't do that. One, two, three uh, is an important, important um, indication. Uh, it's not showing, it's not just counting the candles when it's um, pulling back, uh, every uh, number, a dot, uh, a number, if it's a number one, two, three, four, and five, each of them has its own individual code snippet in there. Uh, so it's slightly different. So, uh, but if you know what you're doing, then you can change it, which that setting I will cover in a bit. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, so confirmation signals only. What is a confirmation signal? Well, sometimes um, we played with this uh, a lot, and people can use that as well. Uh, so what is the banana signal? The banana signal is basically um, a calculated pullback method. And if you want to see only the signals uh, when price, um, when there's a candle with a confirmation. So what would be a confirmation candle? So if it's a bullish, a bearish signal like this, then you want a candle to have a, a wick or you want the candle to be a bearish candle. So maybe this one will be a confirmation. So print on bar, false, confirmation candle, true. If I set that to true, then you know that this candle is a confirmation candle. Now why this is a confirmation candle is the code looks at that the open and the close are below the middle of the candle. So because there's a wick up there, it is giving you an idea that sellers are strong here. So as you can see, all of the other signals have disappeared because they didn't have a confirmation candle. And a confirmation candle can be either um, a full bullish candle uh, or a full bearish candle, or it will have a wick up there. So in this case, uh, in the case of this uh, indicate, uh, this signal, it is a bullish candle if you look at it. But it's not really a strong bullish candle, is it? Because it has a big wick. It's open and close up below the middle of the candle. So it's got bearish tendencies. So it is maybe a bullish candle by definition because the close is higher than the open. But it really is a bearish indicative candle. Right. Uh, let's go to the DAX today. There were some great examples in there. The DAX has been falling, although US open, the U.S. market is closed. The market is busy because of those Ukrainian news and stuff, most probably. So as you can see here, this is a confirmation candle. And I will address the dots in a bit. So the dots are basically, uh, again, they are banana signals, but they are seeds, which means they are inside candles, but also 
they conform to the banana uh, pullback um, definitions, right? So this is a one candle pullback. This is what we call a, a waltz pattern because there's a trend candle before it. Okay, let me just go back to the indicators again. And if I undo the confirmation signals, then you will see a lot more signals. You'll see these signals. Now, they are not strong bullish candles. They are dojis. I do use them, uh, like, for example, this one. So if I went to a confirmation candle, and let's see if it will appear. So as you can see, this is still appearing. Why? Because one, it is uh, bullish, because open is uh, lower than the close. So for that reason, but we know it's a doji candle, but it also has a low, which is lower than the previous candle, and it has a wick. And the open and close is above the middle of the candle. All right, let's go back. With this speed, it's going to take a little while to finish this. Right. So here, uh, let me just bring it back. And if I click reset, it's going to go to default. Uh, symbol width is literally the, the width of the signal. So if I change it to, say, 3, just for the sake of it, then all of them will go thicker. Right? Let's go back. And reset. Okay, so universal bull bear colors. Now, if you wanted to color each signal different, if you, if you wanted to give a different color for 1, 2, 3, and the dots, uh, then you can do that in the settings for individual. So you have cell banana 1 and all of those, 2, 3, 4, all the way till 5. But if you want to just simplify this stuff, like for example, if you give them different colors, but sometimes you want to have universal colors, you want to set that to true. If you turn it to false, and let's suppose I change the color of um, some of these. Uh, let's, let's, let's just play with it. Okay. And instead of pink, I'm going to go for orange. And I'll do this to some uh, odd color. And this one over here. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, uh, these are the colors that have changed. This has been changed to that. So you can uh, make it that way. And if you have separ separate settings for everything, for bulls and bears, all the way till from dots to uh, the uh, one, two, three, four, five, and you can turn, uh, where did it go? <laughs> Here. So if I say true, and then I go to the indicator, then, ignores, then it ignores the other colors and gives you a universal color, and that's our setting. So as you can see, the previous um, settings are still there. They're saved, but you can override them. So what's next? So this is the bullish signal color for universal settings, and this is the bearish signal color for universal settings. So all the bear signals, whether they are dots or numbers, are going to appear in this, and all the bull bullish buy signals, uh, whether they are dots or numbers, will appear in this color. Okay, what is the distance? So. If you wanted to have a distance between the high and low where the signal is printed, like here, if you wanted to give it a little bit of distance, then depending on how your broker um, defines a pip or a tick, then you can play around with this. For example, if I do 50 for this, let's see what happens. See? So 50 is kind of, you know, half a, half a tick on this broker or for this particular um, uh, market. So for currencies, it's different. For CFDs, it's different, you know, indices and stuff, right? So you wanted to remove that a little bit. But the dots, most probably, yeah, there they are. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, show 1C. Now, what is 1C? 1C is the one candle pullback. That's the number one. And show 1C empty, basically, now it means... Uh, it, it is, this is the banana, num, the number one si symbol. That's that one. And this is the one candle pullback inside our seed. So if I make them to false, then we're not going to see those. So this is not one candle, it's a two candle, so this one is still appearing. So if I go to the settings for number two, um, so sell banana one arrow. Okay, what's the next one? Okay, so these are the symbol codes. So if you go to the um, MT4 or do a Google search on Wingdings, you'll be able to find what codes for these symbols. 
uh, are used in MT4, and you can use several different ones. So 159 is basically for the dot, and 140 is for number one. So you can change these. I've allowed you to change these colors. So let me just reset it. And just for the sake of it, if I change this to, let's say, 170 and 118, and let's see what happens. Okay, here you go. So it was, for this one, that's one, one candle pulled back. It's not a pullback. It's actually a pause, a seed. So we've changed the symbol for that. If you wanted to change that, it's up to you. And likewise, it's self-explanatory. Then show 2C and 2C empty. Basically, 2C is the two candle, uh, is the number two signal, this one. And the 2C empty is basically uh, when there's a second seed. So let's see if we can find an example of that. Oh, there was one example over here, actually. Um, let's see. So that we have changed these symbols, so let's reset them. And as you can see, these are all one candles. So you'll find a few examples uh, where you have one seed and then there's another one after it. So you'll see that. Or you might see that there are, uh, there's a one candle pullback. Uh, there's a one which is followed by a seed. Then you will see this is a one candle seed, a waltz pattern. And that's very nice as well. My favorites are the dots, the one, two, and the three. I mean, even four, sometimes even five. Five appears very rarely. Uh, here you go, that's the example of the two seed. So let's suppose if I go to the settings and say, I don't want to see the second uh, dot, and I switch that to false, then it's not gonna appear, right? And if I did not want to trade any of the inside bars, and I can switch both of these to false, and then they will not appear, right? Because by definition, a pullback must have, so for this one to be a signal, you, there the code checks that if the low of this candle is lower than the previous and the high is lower than the previous. It also checks if this high is higher than this, right? Let's go to the other settings now. Let's go to reset. So we have all the way to three, three A, so, oh yeah, yeah, you have the third seed option as well, so it's this one, all right? So if you say show 3C empty and you set it to false, then you won't see if there's an inside candle on, if it's a pullback and a third inside candle, all right? So all the way to five, we're not left with many options now. Universal symbol. So let's suppose you wanted to just use one symbol for all the uh, signals, one, two, three, all the way to five, and the inside bars. So I'm using 159, which is a dot. So suppose you wanted to see dots everywhere, you can turn that to true. It will ignore the other settings and it will just show you dots everywhere. So every dot, basically, based on the rules that you should be aware of uh, to use with banana, you will be able to use all of those rules. And they are here. So this dot is uh, a signal, this is a signal, and this is a signal. If you go to the five-minute chart, today was a very beautiful uh, day to trade for the five-minute time frame. As you can see, you have a signal here, a 3R, there's a signal here, probably a break-even, then you have a signal here, a nice 3R, a signal here, a nice 3R. Let's actually change this to uh, the normal settings so we can see the one, two, three. So if that's your inside. You will take a set a pending order on this, and then you will delete that, and then set it based on this. And then you delete that and then set a new order based on this and this one will be triggered and you will hit your 3R, 5R, I mean, look at this. Uh, it requires a 30 stop loss and you could have hit 300. So that was a one ratio 10 trade um, and it, over here. So I actually did trade somewhere here. Let's bring it to the one minute chart. Yep, I, I saw this move and I took a trade here Anyway, so that's besides the point. Let's go to the banana indicator again. So that's the setting for universal symbol. And now there's a very important setting here. The default setting is aggressive on. So what is this? Well, we when we first started the low bot method, we were trading pullbacks and we were using 10 EMA and 20 EMA. Those were the dash lines. But then we did some further testing and stuff. We used an AI testing mechanism for this to Come, come up with different variations of what works and what doesn't work. And we found out that the current settings, the 5 EMA and 10 EMA, 
and then combined with 25 and 50 MA works better. It, it, it gives you more winners. It eliminates a lot of the losing trades. Uh, even though if you were trading the bef uh, before with the non-aggressive settings, the overall result was that banana was having was giving us a trading edge in the market. It was profitable, but with this, it has improved even more. So we have the aggressive on. Uh, just for example, if I undo the aggressive, then what it's going to do is that it, it the code is not checking 10, 5, and 10. So as you know, that we have the other indicator. So once you switch that one to non-aggressive, then uh, you should undo this one as well. And then what you see is that you have a 10 and 20, and then you have, uh, I think, 30 and the multiple and 100 up there. So then it looks like this. I think for Forex, uh, these settings will work best. And, um, but any of the settings, if you use, you have to stick to them. They all work. And it's that. So the aggressive setting is basically are for uh, more designed for momentum breakout trading. So whenever there is no signal, then that means that the momentum of the market it's not really strong. So let's go to reset here again. <clears throat> okay, the other settings are just for playing around uh, when we were developing the strategy. Um, uh, passive aggressive. These are a few signals. So uh, let's go to the explanation of this. What does it say? Uh, can we actually see it? Or let's drag this a bit. And it doesn't do that. Okay. Let's drag it a bit more. Okay. Uh, passive aggressive. Only show signals with at least three candle bullish or bearish impulse move. Okay. So if you do passive aggressive, what it's going to do is that it's going to look for impulse moves, which is the next setting as well. So when you set. Uh, you can turn passive aggressive on, or you can say check impulse. So if I turn this on, then you can see some of the signals have disappeared. So what's happened there? Well, the code looks for the last three to five candles if they had lower lows and if they had some sort of momentum. So the code is confirming here is that although if you saw it with your eyes, you probably saw that this didn't have much momentum, and that is why actually I filtered this trade because I wanted to see candles like these, you know, like something like this. So this is momentum. So this is a better signal, though a little bit late in the trend. I wanted to see candles like this. But uh, what the code would look for is that if there is momentum before the signal. So that's a very good signal. So these signals disappeared. Let's bring them back. Reset. And so this could be very powerful uh, filter. I can read this uh, myself manually. So. Um, I don't switch that on, but if you are not sure what impulse is, then you can go to the settings and check for impulse moves, which would be, where did it go? Check impulse, because you know this is the um, rule number one for banana is to check for the impulse. So here, uh, by the strict rules, um, the banana indicator has uh, decided that there is no good impulse. And if you look at the candles, actually, the code worked correctly. Because as you can see, there's a low here, and then there's a failure, there's a big wick. So it's not really clear, and then it goes sideways. Um, but this one seems to have worked on the seed. And let's go and find some of the Friday signals. As you can see here, the banana has correctly uh, looked at the market and decided or concluded that there was a good impulse before the signal, so it has been printed here again it's checked for the impulse and it's found satisfactory the last three candles are impulsive and then here we don't have signals and it doesn't the banana does not print signals against the trend let's look at it why it doesn't do that because there is a code for it okay so let's go to the next settings so that's the filter EMA solid that's the solid line this one the dark one uh, that's set to false uh, because we have other settings in the filter EMA dashed. So uh, the code looks mostly for the dash line, but even in the dash line code, the code looks for, um, you know, closes at least uh, above or below. Uh, let me just explain that a bit. So if we turn the um, filter, that a signal, if it's um, based on the dash line, 
We will also look for the solid line as well. It will make sure that even if there's a, you know, oh, let me just find a good example. Like, like over here, you can see that the close is above the by EMA, but still is showing a signal. That is because the code has checked that although uh, it is a pullback, although it has closed above the five EMA, it has found that the, the close of the candle and is below the uh, solid line, which is the 10 EMA, and the low is below it as well. So over here, you can see that although it's a bearish candle, it is a pullback. I'm not saying it's the best setup. As you can see on the left, it's not good. But the reason it's showing the signal, even though the low is lower than the 20 EMA, is that the close is at least above the 20 EMA. If the close was below it, then this signal will be filtered, like over there. Okay, what else do we have? So uh, there's quite interesting code underneath it, and the code was not totally uh, arrived. I mean, we didn't just arrive at the code by simply, you know, coming up with an idea and something. Um, we use several different softwares to check it, and uh, probably about 50% of it is AI-based. Uh, we found out what, what uh, helped the quant strategy, something that is the software that we used. Uh, we're very thankful to them for the beautiful software that they have used. Anyway, so what's next? Well, one more important thing is left. That's the low bot settings. Filter EMA crossover, that's always set to true. What is this? Uh, well, the code will look for that whenever it's printing, uh, it will make sure that the dash line is above the 20 for a signal, of a buy signal, and the dash line is below the, the not the dash line is below the solid, sorry. Which means in this case, with the aggressive settings on, the 5 EMA is below the 10 EMA, only that it will print the signal. Let's go to the last setting. Um, well, there are a few more, actually. <clears throat> OK. Uh, did I miss these? Yes, there's this freestyle. Well, you can turn that on. What it will do is that it will allow you to see all the signals, which don't have any filters. Uh, let's have a, give it a go. But um, it's not advisable to trade in this. This is simply to understand the indicator. So if you have no filters, then the code is simply looking for a pullback uh, setup, which could be against the trend or with the trend. It doesn't really matter. So in this case, it's showing red because it's considering this as an impulse down and pull back up. In, in this case, it's showing as bullish because it's considering this as impulse up and pull back. So if you look at this chart uh, with freestyle settings, you will understand what this pullback mechanism is and why we have the filters for it. Let's go to reset again. Okay, so where are we now? Check close. Okay, so when you set check close, what it will do is basically um, it's the same thing as that first setting, confirmation signals only. So that is like a, a double code in there. So if you just check this as close, then what, will, what it will do is that if there is a buy signal, it will make sure that it's a bullish candle. If it's a bear signal, then it will make sure it's a bearish candle. Or even if it's a bearish candle, then it needs, it will look at if it's a pin bar, let's suppose a pin bar or a candle with a tail, and it's a bullish candle, uh, it's a bullish signal, but the close is slightly below the open, and then technically it is, um, you know, the example that I showed earlier, uh, it's a, a bullish signal, uh, but the color is bearish or whatever, something like that. <clears throat> okay, what's next? Uh, EMA dashed, EMA crossover. And this setting is for, um, if you want to trade the five minute chart or the one minute chart, basically it is for the five minute chart and you wanted to make sure that it is always in sync with the hourly chart, then what we will do is that it will only give you signals when the hourly chart is showing an uptrend or a downtrend. So you can play around with this and check the signals what it works for you. So if I'm on the five minute chart, it's gonna do something like this. See over here why we're not seeing signals. Let's actually mark this and go to the hourly chart to find out what's happening. You can see that on the hourly chart, the trend was not really confirmed at their point, but at this point, we can see that the 10 is below the 20 or the dashed is below the solid line, then it will start giving signals over here. So that's the setting for this. 
Uh, I don't use that because we have a separate setting for this. Uh, that's always in sync with H1, and what we use is the filter EMA50. Now, EMA50 is this one, and that is basically a multiple of the solid line. So what it does is that when you have the dash, the black dash line below the solid dash line, and the solid dash line below the gray dash line, and the, da and the, the gray dash line below the solid line, this means, is, this means that the two lines are separated and pointing down both on the one minute chart and the five minute chart. So if I mark this here and then go, oh, this, this is actually a five minute chart. In this case, it will be the M30 chart. So in this case, when we look at this, uh, oh, hold on, let's go to another one. Like over here, we have the ribbon open. It's like the alligator. Uh, what it's showing us is that on the one minute chart, the five EMA is above the 20, and on the five minute chart, the five EMA is above the 20. So let's have a look at it. If it's true, let's go to the five minute chart. You can see that on the five minute chart, the dash line is above the solid. So on the five minute chart, this would be uh, the dash line of the five times higher time frame. So this is 25, so there's a 25 minute time frame. Basically, and this is the 10 EMA or the, this line of the 25 uh, minute time frame, but we don't have 25 minute time, time frame. So the most, uh, the closest one is M30. All right, let's go to the next one. And I think there's nothing else left. And that's what it is. And this is a little setting that if you wanted to make sure that chart was on foreground. So if the chart is on foreground, then the signals will appear underneath it. See, the wicks. So it helps with if you want to see the wicks. Or you can use the distance for this. Right, so that's it. Um, we don't have the pop-up alerts and email alerts and uh, push alerts in this indicator in this version, but in the next version, I promise we're going to add that to it. So you'll be able to, if you're trading the hourly, four hourly charts, then you'll be able to set uh, email and push alerts. Uh, all right. If you need any more help about this, please do let us know. Go to the banana page and comment or ask in the forum. And if you're in the Discord, you can ask in there as well.